Hi, welcome back to Once Upon a Game. I'm Kevin Kitchens, and in this episode, I'm going to do an unboxing of Seven Days Battles from Worthington Publications. This is uh, Seven Days Battles from June 25th, July 1st, 1862. Um, ugh. This is a Heavy Box. This is Volume 3 in the Civil War Brigade Battle Series. The game allows players to refight four key engagements during the Seven Days Battles from June 26th to July 1st, 1862. The battles were fought between the Union Confederate Armies on the Virginia Peninsula around the Confederate capital of Richmond. Um, it's two players. Uh, it can be played solitaire, however. Uh, it's four out of ten, and it's a three to six hour game. So let's crack it open, see what you get inside. out we have a bag of baggies always nice we have two dice they're loose a red and a blue we'll say the red is the south and the blue is the north because that probably makes the most sense let's see who wins we'll settle it all right here on one die roll the the rebels won six to five recaps at 11. see you on sports all right we start out with the civil war brigade battle series the series rules volume 1.3 b get one copy of that very small eight page rule book it's not very uh rules dense um large print kind of a glossy stock you can see some reflection there but uh, depending on your lighting in your room not too bad so this is obviously for the whole series and then we have the playbook this is for volume three this is just for the seven days battles the following series rules do not apply to this battles so you may not build press works you may not burn bridges depots or rail lines you may not search for forward so it goes through for these for the special rules based on the scenarios uh excuse me excuse me these are the special rules this is the playbook these are the special rules and then these are this the scenarios one two three and for, well, we have multiple scenarios for the four battles. So let's see, we got five, six, historic battle, battle of Glendale, seven, Malvern Hill. Tells you which map to use. Eight, so you actually have eight scenarios here. Here's your terrain chart. So that's pretty cool. Uh, tells you which map to use. So there's two on the Beaver Dam Creek board. There's one on the Gaines Mill board. There's one that uses Beaver Dam and Gaines Mill. There's one that uses Glendale and Malvern Hill. There's one that uses Malvern Hill. And lastly, there's one that uses Glendale and Malvern Hill. So Glendale never gets used by itself. Okay, and then we've got our player aid cards here. <clears throat> we have two copies of those. Same thing, large print, very large print. Probably could have been half the size of this, but hey, you're getting like me and your eyes are getting a little old. Helps to read them. Then we've got our counters. Seems like there's lots of counters here. Yeah, well, not a lot of counters actually. There's a lot of reference cards and strength point markers, it looks like. And they're self-punching. They're just falling out of the the frame here. Uh, nice thickness. Very clearly marked. Decent size. I like I like this size. It's about three quarters of an inch. Good thickness, like I said, and clearly legible fonts. And numbers. Um, we've got out of command range, Confederate tie to battle markers. Trying to get those back in there, they're just going to fall out as the board flexes. They just all fall out. You probably just flex the board, and they would all just come out. Or something's fired, and I assume these are strength point markers for the different divisions. We will find out. Hey, and there's the old school war games by Worthington. Cool, 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 cool. All right, so there's that, and then we've got a whole sheet. But again, what I assume are just going to be strength point markers. So 1 through 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you just store those and use them as you need them. Oh, and they go up to like 24. They go up to 24. No, they even go higher. If, this, if that's what this is, we'll find out what these are. Fired markers, more dismounted. Some more units. These are obviously the, uh, the Union. Gray is the Confederates. The blue and the gray casualty markers. 
to track those. And then again, some more out of command, fired, routed, just general markers. Probably would have been nice if the if these markers were uh, again. We'll see how they how they work, but uh, they were a little smaller. Like if these were bigger and these were smaller, so you could see these beneath those instead of just in stacks. But minor nit. So then we do have our mounted boards, which is always nice. Mounted boards rule. Oh, these are these are eight panel boards. Oh my gosh! And they're gonna some of them are gonna combine. Now, interesting for Worthington, this one does not include a tray as they have been doing in recent years. So let's open these maps and take a look. All right, so this is the, uh, these are double sided too, right? So here's the uh, Gaines Mill map. You can see very functional, kind of a, kind of a classic old world map style. Old world, listen to me, uh, antebellum uh, or it wouldn't be antebellum, it wouldn't be postbellum, it would be during bellum. So bellum map style. Anyway, uh, do, do bellum on bellum, if that work? Anyway, um, so you got your turn tracker, this is the Gaines Mill map, lost track, and you track them up to the, you track your losses up to, you can go up to 399 strength point losses. So that's one side. And then we got the other side, which is Glendale, which runs Portrait. And this is gonna be combined with another map, as we saw. Malvern, I think it was. So you got a, you got a turn track here, and you got the lost track, and then you know, just the different layout in the terrain. It's all different. It's actually, I said this is an eight panel map. It's actually a six panel map in the smoke. Then we got map two. This is uh, Beaver Dam Creek. I guess it runs more this way, given on where the lost track turn tracks are located. Walnut Grove, the, uh, the Wilders. Now Malvern Hill is also in landscape mode and it, you'll see it has no turn track or lost track because it's always combined with one of the other maps, Glendale I believe, so they connect. And I'll show you how to connect them. So those are the two maps. So if you pick up a copy of The Seven Days Battles by Worthington Publishing, you're going to get those two six-panel mounted maps, double-sided, that combine in various ways to make maps. You're going to get the four sheets of counters and markers pre-rounded, about three-quarters of an inch. Two copies of the player reference chart terrain chart the 12 page the 12, yeah 12 page rule book also with a terrain chart on the back and the series rules which is only eight pages for the civil war brigade battle series you're gonna get the bag o baggies and two dice let's see who wins the second battle let's see south one again nine to three one both games of the double hunter that is everything that comes in Seven Days Battles from Worthington Publishing. Thank you so much for watching. God bless you. Bye-bye. Oh!